sang, praise him in his high heaven. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the flute. Praise him with the crash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbal. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for bringing us together to sing praises to you because we know that God raised you from the dead and we are here in a triumphant way to sing the Alleluia. We thank you, Lord, for all who have organized this event. Be with them and also be with each one of them who is singing praises to you and with all those who are gathered here to listen to them. Gracious God, bless this event and through this event, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray.
I have set down in the annals of heaven the entire history of the universe, the world and of humankind. I have recorded the creation of man, his first footsteps, his first words, and his first helpmeet. I was there in the Garden of Eden when Lucifer appeared and deceived the parents of humankind. I recorded with a broken heart the curse of death being pronounced on humanity. I am Metatron, the recorder. I have also recorded the promise of the seed of the woman, the coming Messiah, and the great deliverance that has been made available to humanity. Throughout history, I have announced and informed the people of God regarding the coming of the Messiah. I have prepared the way of the Lord so that when the set time fully comes, God will send his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that they may receive adoption to sonship. I am Gabriel, the messenger. I have carried the message to Zacharias that his son John will prepare the way for the coming Messiah.
God entered time and space and was born as a baby in Bethlehem in Judea. The child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. Led by the Spirit of God in the wilderness, he battled Lucifer and overcame him. Then he started his public ministry to announce the coming of the kingdom of God. His love and compassion touched both Jewish and Gentiles alike. The Spirit of the Lord was on him because the Lord had anointed him to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. I am Jehudiel, the rewarder. I await the Messiah to come and reward those who believe in him.
Jerusalem, the city of peace, the city of redemption. The name of the Lord will be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. Praise be to the Lord from Zion, to him who dwells in Jerusalem. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. Extol to the Lord Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion, Jerusalem, the city of the kings. But now Jerusalem has rejected her king. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together. As a hen gathers her click chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. We rejected him because our hearts and our foolish minds were darkened. We simply could not understand God's love for us. King, 
chose to present himself to his people on the first day of the Passover week. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He came riding on a donkey, a symbol of humility and servitude, and not on a horse, which stands for power and majesty. For he veiled his divine glory with humanity. Our hopes were raised when we saw him riding into Jerusalem on that beautiful Sunday morning. We expected him to defeat the Romans with his miraculous power and set up a Jewish kingdom. Hosanna! Hosanna! He who comes in the name of the Lord, be praised! May his kingdom pass forever! Rejected by his people, the king was nailed to the cross. He was stripped, spat upon, humiliated, and scourged. He was forced to carry his own cross. The creator of the universe was condemned to die as a common criminal.
angels have for ages been in awe of the grace and love of God. We know that our Creator is awesome in power and majesty in His holiness. ages is written there isn't a better moment to display God's everlasting love and mercy than at Calvary oh humanity have you ever wondered if God loves you look to Calvary and you will see the greatest expression of God's love for humanity a God who does not suffer is a God who cannot love our God has suffered for humanity he became one of you and has died for all of you. He understands the feelings of your infirmity. It was at this point that we realized God's eternal plan. We look back at the animal sacrifices our ancestors carried out day after day and year after year. This would never take away our sins completely. Here, at the cross, the perfect man gave his life and died to save us from our sins.
The Savior's first cry on the cross was one of pardon for his enemies. As they crucified, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He kept repeating this as they nailed him to the cross, as they lifted up the cross, and as they watched him die. Humanity finds it easy to forgive after many years, when the wounds are dulled by time. But Christ forgave, even when the pain was at its worst and the wounds were still fresh. This is a display of the eternal love of God. God will not hold the murder of his precious son, the Lord of glory, against those who believe in him. Anyone wanting God's forgiveness based on Calvary will be forgiven. Oh God, this is indeed amazing love that you, my God, should die for me.
buried his body and thought he had gone. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose victoriously from the dead on the beautiful Sunday morning, even as the unbelieving Jews were preparing to celebrate the Feast of the First Fruits. Oh, oh, oh. 
power of God who displayed this power in creation by making things ex nihilio out of nothing. Only he who created life can resurrect it after death. Only he can reverse the hideousness that is death itself. And only he can remove the sting that is death and the victory that is the graves. God guarantees the believer's resurrection at the coming of Jesus Christ for his body, the church, at the rapture. Such hope and assurance results in a great song of triumph. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The resurrection is a triumphant and glorious victory for every believer. The Lord Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose the third day according to the scripture and he is coming again the dead in Christ will be raised up and those who remain and are alive at his coming will be changed and receive new glorified bodies oh what glory oh what hope for us it is no longer an enemy to be feared for he has given us the victory loving Father, we thank you for your creation. Lord, you created everything that is seen and unseen, and you saw that these things were good. 
Then you created man and his helpmeet in the Garden of Eden. And you saw that these things were good. We saw your creation power, your immense power at display in the Garden of Eden and throughout the whole universe. Lord, even though Adam and Eve let down the Almighty God, let down the rest of humanity that were to follow them, Lord, in your mercy and in your grace, you promised us a savior. We thank you for the seed of the woman, born in the fullness of time, born in humble circumstances. Lord, we thank you that he displayed his grace and his love towards us. Lord, we think of the Samaritan woman, even in the Middle Eastern, hot Middle Eastern sun, he had time for her. A woman who had lived in sin, who was trapped by sin, but you gave her deliverance and introduced her to the living water. Lord, we think of the thief on the cross, a man who was so evil, and he was condemned to die, just like the Lord on the cross. But the Lord looked at him with favor and grace, and he gave him redemption, inviting him, him to be a partaker of paradise. Lord, we thank you for the cross. Thank you, Lord, for the suffering Savior on the cross. Thank you, Lord, that he died for us as the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Thank you, Lord, that he died for each and every one of us. It is our sin that nailed him on the cross. Lord, every single act of ours, every omission of ours, put him there on the cross. We are all equally guilty of nailing the creator of the universe to the cross. We thank you for the God-man, 100% God and 100% man, who lived and died for us. When he lived, he taught us how to live. And when he died, he taught us how to die. And he died as the Passover lamb of God at the appointed hour. And he gave his spirit into the Father's hands. Father, we thank you for his death that paid the ransom for us and has set us free. Lord, we also thank you for the empty tomb Lord, we thank you that the Lord Jesus rose again victoriously on the third day. We thank you for the resurrection power. Lord, because of his resurrection as the first to rise from the dead, the first fruits of all those who rise, we too share in that common hope that one day the Lord will raise us all into the newness of life. Father, we thank you that even though these bodies of ours are perishing day after day, our inner person is being renewed endlessly. And one day our body, soul and spirit will be reunited at the resurrection. Lord, we thank you for the Savior who is now seated at the right hand of the Father, pleading for us, interceding for us. Our great high priest who knows the feelings of our infirmities. He knows the pain that we go through because God became human. God became like one of us. And he lived like one of us. He understands what it is to be human. Thank you, Father, for the understanding high priest that we have, who's seated in the heavenly realms right now. Lord, we also thank you for the coming Savior, that one day he's coming back for us. He's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for his church, that he's going to take us to be with him. Lord, we thank you for our eternal life that you have given to us, Father because the Lord Jesus died and rose again, that we too will be partakers of eternal life. And this life is here and now. You have given it to us, Father, as we have trusted in Christ as our personal savior or sin bearer. Lord, we thank you for these moments that we are able to spend together here. Thank you, Lord, for the divine music. Thank you, Lord, for the thoughts that you have put across, which, with which you have challenged us this evening, Father. Help us to live in the light of eternity. Help us to live in the light of the resurrection of Christ as we live on this side of Easter. Thank you, Father, once again for filling our hearts with joy and peace that this world cannot give and that this world cannot take away. Lord, as Paul said, we want to know Christ, to experience the power of his resurrection, to be partakers of his suffering, Lord, we want to know him more and more. Lord, it is our prayer 
that in the hearts and minds of each and every one of us today, this evening, that the Lord Jesus will reign supreme, not just this evening, but for all time to come, that he will reign supreme. We magnify his name, we glorify his name, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully in the work of the Lord, for you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Thank you, Lord, for this promise. Thank you, Lord, for the coming Savior. Thank you for your love, your amazing love, and your amazing grace towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray and praise you. Amen.
Let us offer, let us offer all our intercessions, supplications, and prayers to risen Christ by saying the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide you now and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God.